let's get fired up with news you can use. We're going to talk a little bit today about um, the recession. And then, first of all, before we even get into that, I'm going to tell you a little about some of the news uh, cycle that has come out the last couple of days. Uh, and this, this comes from three sources, National Association of Realtors, which finally is now talking housing bubble, uh, Fannie, Freddie, uh, the government-backed GSE entities, and the Fed themselves. In, in all three cases, they have said, we are heading into recessionary territory. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. And that housing prices um, are going to really hamper the ability of people to, not just the prices, but the cost of housing. We've always focused on the, the actual prices of houses. You know, they're going up and people can't afford them and all that. That's not the problem. The problem is the interest rates. So the actually the National Association of Realtors, believe it or not, is they're they're saying that housing prices are still going to go up, although everybody else is saying they're going to go down, but that the actual affordability or cost of buying homes is going to dramatically increase, which is going to make it more difficult. So the Fed did a study and said, listen, for three months this year, if you waited from the 1st of January to the 1st of April, you're paying 20% more for your housing. So if you got a $250,000 house, the over the life of that loan, it's going to cost you $50,000 more in April than it would have cost you in January. And then they went back and looked at a year ago. And a year ago, that uh, $250,000 house at that time will will cost you in increased costs another 150,000 so it'll go from 250 to 400 uh, cost 60% increase in a year almost all of it is due to the hidden thing that people aren't really talking about which is the interest rates now the interest rates increases that the fed has uh, kicked in and suggested it's going to happen seven times this year uh, is only now coming into the numbers the historical numbers so Prices of interest or prices of money went from 2.6% to now 5.2, a literal doubling uh, in the last four months, four and a half, five months. And that is, is going to make uh, the affordability of housing. That will be the thing that drops us into a recession. That's the thing that will really make a, a huge difference out there right now. So nobody focuses on that. Everybody's focusing on, oh, this house used to be you know, uh, 300,000 and now it's 360 and it's going to go to 380 and all that. That stuff is almost irrelevant compared to the increases that it's going to cost the average buyer. So look at it like this. <clears throat> uh, we talk a lot about a buy here, pay here car lot and how these things work. And buy here, pay here car lot is where people uh, who may not have the best credit will go to buy a car because a buy here, pay here car lot will allow you to go in and get a car with relatively decent amount down, a small small to decent amount down, and uh, they'll, they'll finance people who won't otherwise be financed. And when people go to buy something from a buy here, pay here car lot, they're only looking at two things. They only wanna know how much money does it take today to be able to drive that car off this lot and what's my monthly payment gonna be. The thing they don't ask, uh, just like our lease option tenants, is what's the cost of the house? Uh, because to those people, that's irrelevant. All they're looking at is how much down and what is my my monthly going to be. And the housing market is starting to get like that, uh, where people are going to even ignore the price of the house, and they're going to start looking at uh, the numbers that they're going to be paying on a monthly basis. So, for example, using that 60% increase, a year ago, uh, a $500,000 mortgage would have cost you $1,800. Today, it's $2,950 for that same mortgage. So with no change in the price of the house, a 500,000 mortgage a year ago and a 500,000 mortgage today. So that's a, that's a really large increase. $1,200 on an $1,800 base is you know, right at two thirds, 67%. And that's what we're gonna see coming up. Now let's talk about what happens, uh, the next step in recession. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, actually, if you wanna put that card up, uh, we'll read that real quickly. That This is the literal definition of recession. And then we'll talk about how that's going to affect everybody. Uh, so this is from Investopedia. It's a recession is a significant decline in economic activity spread across the economy, normally visible in production, employment, and other indicators. A recession begins when the economy reaches a peak of economic activity 
and ends when the economy reaches its trough down at the bottom. So they've been talking that we could enter into some recessionary territory in 2024. Uh, as recently as three weeks ago, the Fed was saying maybe the, the tail end of 2023. Yesterday, now the Fed is saying probably the middle of next year. So with a little over a year to go, uh, they're calling a recession. I think it's going to happen sooner. I think it could happen as early as the spring. Now, is a recession good or bad for housing market? Yes, it's both. For, for us, the way we teach transactional engineering, it's actually a boon. It is beneficial to us. And it's beneficial to the people who can't otherwise afford a house because there'll be more seller finance type transactions available and, and offered out there in the marketplace. And those transactions uh, will be things like lease options and, and true seller carrybacks. It'll be easier for you to buy and it'll be easier for you to sell during a recessionary period. During a recessionary period, um, at least the beginning stages, interest rates are high. So what's going to happen is these rates will continue to go up through the end of 2022. And as soon as the economy really starts hurting and some of the other signs of recession is unemployment starts dropping, capital improvements or capital expansion by businesses stops or is, is rolled dramatically back. Nobody expands, nobody borrows, credit cards cost more. Car loans cost more, of course, housing costs more because of the interest rate we just talked about. Uh, when, when all those things happen, the, the economy will grind to a halt. One, it's when it is in a halt, uh, that's when you're in a recession. And when they're in a recession for a, I think this time, a very short period of time, you'll see the Fed reverse course and stop start dropping interest rates. And I think you'll see that probably by the end of 2023 and into 2024, which is really probably one of the quickest times that I've ever seen from them raising rates to they drop rates. They, as we've talked about several times in previous news you can use, they've been late to the party. They didn't raise interest rates soon enough to combat inflation. And that's why at the end of last month, we had inflation that was 8%, all time high or high, high for the last 40 years, at least in most of our um, uh, windows looking back, it, that's as high as it's ever been. They, the only way they can deal with that, uh, you know, immovable object is with brute force of continual rate hikes. They will eventually get rate interest so high that it will choke off the economy, will enter into recession. But now they know that we have to drop those interest rates very quickly at that point. And uh, when they do that, that will spur the economy again. Now, Keep in mind, housing costs, uh, when you buy a house, interest rates, for example, or the price of houses, neither of those factor into what's called the CPI or consumer price index. So they're, they're not part of the inflation calculation. However, rental rates are. And uh, what you're gonna see is I believe rental rates continuing to increase because the demand will be for rental houses. When people can no longer afford to buy a house, uh, their next option is to rent one. And going right along with rentals is things like lease options and those types of things. So once again, there'll be a bigger demand for what it is that we create and sell, and there'll be less demand for what the real estate agents go out there and do, which is to get people to list houses and then sell those houses. So, you know, from my standpoint, from this seat, and I've been through this thing for 23 years, we're in, into a golden window uh, and once again, we've talked about this in the past, that transitional period from a great economy to a bad economy, that stuff usually runs from 12 to 24 months. And that is the period of time when those in the transactional engineering piece of this business do the best. We're getting ready to enter one of those things. We're in it right now. Uh, keep your eyes and ears open and uh, you'll, you will see all kinds of opportunities. We're getting more calls from sellers uh, we're doing one campaign, for example, in Arkansas, I believe it is, a direct mail campaign. And we are literally getting so many calls from sellers of homes that we cannot keep up with it. We're getting too many uh, people who want to parachute out. And that's the old rats leaving the sinking ship scenario where everybody who has waited on the sidelines to sell their house uh, now is seeing that market evaporate or dry up. Actually, it's already happened. It's too late. Uh, but they're all running to the marketplace right now and they get more panicked and people run for the door 
and they're all trying to get through the door at the same time. That creates golden buying opportunities for us, along with a perfect buyer's market for our type of product, which is less than perfect credit, uh, dinged up credit, that type of thing, and uh, high down payments and good monthly payments. These people out there have a chunk saved, but because of the interest rate hike, they can't afford a mortgage anymore. They can no longer afford to make it and stay within their, their 30 or 40 percent of their income debt to income ratio uh, type thing. So we are gonna have the only game in town here within the next year, uh, or at least we're gonna have the busiest uh, card table in, in the casino. So um, it, it's a good time to be in this business. And we'll keep teaching you guys exactly how to do this, but I would focus on those types of markets rather than the cash uh, wholesale type. Wholesaling, in my opinion, is dead. Uh, the cash deal in terms of rehabbing, we're doing some rehabs ourselves is still good as long as you're in the starter market. But the best thing out there, the absolute best thing since sliced bread, canned beer, or you know, a fresh cantaloupe is going to be uh, buying something with seller finance and then selling it with seller finance. All right, that is news you can use for the 26th of April, 2022.